I am your poetic haiku host, Kim B. Miller, the first African-American poet laureate for Prince William County, Manassas, and Manassas Park, Virginia, award-winning spoken word poet, facilitator, speaker, teaching artist, author. Let's get into today's subject. Here. <laughs> well, today's subject is that, and not just that, because we need to dispel some lies, some misconceptions, and some straight out manipulations. Let's go. You know, I don't waste much time. Now, every dad is not a deadbeat. Every dad did not have to be chased to become a father. There are several natural dads. There's some who had to learn. And every mother is not a natural mother. Every mother that had a child wasn't naturally maternal. Every mother who had a child didn't love it and receive it. And we are talk, talking for real. There have been great dads. There's a lot of two-parent households that are both dads. There's a lot of single father households. There's a lot of married dads who have wives who are doing quite well, who rightfully and happily participate in their child's upbringing, their child's learning, and their child's development. Can we stop at this lie? All of them. The ones about Black fathers too. Let's stop that. All oh, the Black fathers are incarcerated. Black fathers don't care about their kids. I grew up in a two-parent household. My father cared deeply about me and my siblings, and he is deceased at this point, but I knew he loved me. There was questions in life I had but his love was not one of them. My mother's love was not one of them. So this myth that the black father is always absent or never cares, is just some sort of deadbeat running around, is a myth. Am I saying it never happens? No, because there you go. You'd be like, let's bring the statistics chart out. Let's bring the statistics chart out. Let's do that. Let's do that. Because if you do your research, Black fathers are very involved in their lives, and the statistics prove that to be true. But if we just keep barking the same talking points, then you can just point at Black fathers and say, if they were there, you know, their children would be the better. They are there, and their children are better off for their participation, just as they are with any other race, creed, religion, demographic that has a father. So, moving on from the myths. Fathers deserve rights to their children. When you break up with the mother, that doesn't mean you break up with your kids. I get that sometimes it's a painful breakup and you two may not get along anymore and you two may not want to see each other anymore, but just because there's a breakup does not mean that the father should automatically not see their kids anymore. I said it. Now, if there's abuse and all that other situation, I am not talking about that. I'm talking about a relationship where there was no abuse. Abuse changes the dynamic, and I believe that should be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. For mom, too, by the way. Oh, yeah, the man is not always the one who's the only one who's abusive. Anyway, and abuse comes in many forms, physical, verbal, and unfortunately, so many others, emotional. What I'm saying here as as parents, the mom and the dad both have equal parts in helping raise their children. There's no, I don't believe in 50-50. I believe everybody has equal parts. Whatever that equal parts is for your family is something you have to determine. But just because a woman has a physical connection to the child from actually carrying it from nine months does not mean a man cannot have a connection to their child because they did not carry it for nine months. And the court system has to be more realistic into where is a better spot for the child than opposed to just picking the mom because she's the mom. Because moms can be monsters too. Hey, we talking truth. 
And I'm not saying that a dad can't be a monster because some of you spend so much on time on what I didn't say that you're missing what I did say. Now, both can be monsters now that we've got that established, but moms with both includes mom. I had two fantastic parents. I am not talking about my upbringing or my parents, but I know too many people who had horrible parents, who had bad parenting styles, who pit one against the others, who had obvious favorites. The list goes on. So let's stop the perfect mom parent myth because that's a lie too. Even those who did a great job made mistakes and weren't perfect. I am one of them. But to say, because he's a man, he somehow his rights, you know, evaporate because a woman has a more natural right to a child. I disagree with that. I think the child should go to whoever is going to be more healthy for them in a mental, physical, physical and spiritual manner. That is my opinion. Back to that. A dad is like a pillar of strength with flaws, and a mom is the same, a pillar of strength with flaws. We have got to start giving men and non-binary people the right to raise their children. We have got to start giving them credit for stepping up the same thing, the same credit you give moms who stay at home mom, stay at home moms who get it done, or the ones who work and get it done, those stay at home dads and the dads who go to work and get it done need that same credit too. They need the same credit. Either everybody gets credit or nobody does. You can't say, wow, look at look at her balancing everything as soon as a man do. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Well, that's what she's supposed to be doing. Are we going to talk fact or are we just going to keep sugarcoating things? A mother is an important, and sometimes you hear me New Yorker word. Hold on. <laughs> a mother is an important part of a child's life. A father is an important part of a child's life. Don't rip either away being mean, callous, or trying to prove a point. The only point you're going to prove is hate is unlimited. Yeah, let's say that again. The only point you're going to prove is hate is unlimited and should not be limited. You, I told you before on several podcasts, it's one of my chemisms, you cannot teach hate and limit its use. You just can't. So you teach them to hate a parent. Eventually, they start hating things about you or start acting in a hateful way. They'd be like, well, where did this come from? I only wanted you to hate him. Well, it doesn't work that way. Hate is a, hate's like water. Once you put a drop in, the rest will come. So you can't go, hate him, but not me doesn't work that way. So you don't want to introduce hate into your relationship. So you say, okay, that's nice and good. So what if they, what if um, he's done something wrong? Okay. If there's a way that you need to explain it so that they don't feel like it's their fault, by all means explain it. But if you're doing it so that you can seem right, let's stop. Same for you. Are you going to explain your mistakes? Because if you're explaining his, you should be explaining yours. Yeah, how about that? Fathers, I see you. I've spoken to many of you. Some of you are not in the best relationships. Some of you have not had the best relationships. Some of you are trying to do right by your child and your child has heard horrible stories about you that are not true and some are true. And some you'd like the opportunity to explain yourself. You'd like the opportunity to be heard. And it's hard to counter the lies when the lies are believed over you. To have 
in the past spoken to a father who was trying to combat combat sorry again i'm new yorker in the day combat go against <laughs> the lies that the mom had said and the kids believed and he fought for years and unfortunately i wish i could find his letter i know i have it here in house somewhere he died i believe before he got the chance to see his kids again and those stories honestly just break my heart that these kids will never know who their father truly was because mom was holding a grudge. I can't even explain the anguish some dads are going through right now because they do not have an opportunity to see their kids because of something mom told the kids. If you are that mom that has been telling your kids lies or something you perceive as a truth about the dad so that they do not see or contact or have interaction with their dad, with their dad and there was no abuse taking place, please reconsider what you're doing. You're not just hurting him, you're hurting them too. I need you to hear that. You're hurting them too. And for some, when they find out the truth, they don't look back on you favorably and say, wow, I'm sure you have my best interest at heart. They don't. Now they start looking at you as the liar. Be careful what information you're feeding your kids. Again, we're talking about situations minus of abuse. You should not have them picking a side. If he was horrible and to you in your eyes or had infidelity issues or whatever the case may be, that doesn't mean that he can't love his child. Just like if you have infidelity issues or if you lied, that doesn't mean you can't love your child. There's women cheating too. Children are not asking you to be perfect. They're asking you to be vulnerable. They're asking you to listen. They're asking you to communicate. They're asking you not to put them as a puzzle piece in your war chest. That's what they want. They want to live. They want to enjoy life. Not to be brought in into the, well, you know what your father did today? You know what your mother did today? You know, don't, please. Fathers deserve respect. You already know I think mothers do. So let's not go there. We're talking about dads right now. Fathers deserve respect. They're not just walking cash registers. They're not just there to to pay child support. And let's be clear, some of them are the ones who have custody and y'all aren't paying child support. Hmm, I thought child support was so relevant for the child. Hmm. There are bad fathers, there are good fathers. There are bad mothers, there are good mothers. We're going to keep it perfectly 100 here. And we're going to be talking always about things that affect people. And the things that affect kids is parents fighting, especially in front of them. I get it that you disagree. And I get it that sometimes you're dealing with someone who is ridiculous. But your kid isn't ridiculous. And they don't understand the fight. They think they caused the fight. They think the fight is their problem. They think the fight is their fault. And that's the last thing you wanted for them. As a matter of fact, you're fighting for them, not against them. Remember that. You're fighting for them, not against them. So sit down and listen to them. 
a father in a child's life can give them a sense of peace, tranquility, wholeness, belonging, appreciation. We already know that's true for mom. Again, we're talking about dads today. There is a completion there that mom gives. There's a completion there that dad gives. And the combination of them together is a beautiful thing. Whether it's two dads, two moms, one mom, one dad, if you brought them up together, let them have the completion of you two together. Let them have that completion. Again, stripping away abuse issues or anything else that may be conceived as abusive. Kids have learned to love us for a reason. Don't strip away another part of love because of your hurt. Don't strip her away another opportunity for them to get love because of your pain. Obviously, again, I've talked about it. This is not an abusive relationship included in this conversation. Make sure you're speaking from a place of wholeness. Don't use your previous broken relationships to make your child's relationship broken. They're looking for you to speak for them from a loving place. They're looking for you to speak for them from a place of truth. If you find you can't do that, get the therapy and help you need. But I'll end with this kism, chemism. Your, your child is not a pawn in your game of revenge chest. Again, let me repeat that. Chemism. Your child is not a pawn in your game of revenge chess. Get therapy, get help, include both parents. Dads matter. Embrace them.